abortion and a parent's right to know. The bill before the Texas House would require abortion providers to tell parents of underage girls when their daughter is about to have an abortion. Lawmakers yesterday wrestled with the issue and with politics. Those against the bill did all they could to kick it off the House floor and avoid a vote. But Texas conservatives fought back. And within 10 minutes, the bill was rescheduled for a vote on Friday. Before that vote is taken, there are sure to be more efforts to kill it. We hear more in today's top story from Danny Hermosillo in Austin. Having an abortion is one of the most private decisions a teenage girl might have to make. Whether her parents should know about it is one of the most heated public debates. The parental notification bill before the House of Representatives would require that parents or guardians be notified if their underage daughter is having an abortion. They would be told at least 48 hours before the surgery. A notification bill in no way affects a girl's access to abortion. State Representative Arlene Wolgamuth is spearheading the negotiations to reach a compromise on parental notification. We are interested in parents at least knowing. The people of this state find it incredible that they as parents do not have the right to even know when an invasive surgical procedure is being done on their minor daughters. Conservatives have agreed to allow a judge to grant a waiver if the girl's safety might be threatened by her parents. But they're resisting efforts to allow others like ministers or counselors to bypass notifying parents. I am not comfortable with alternative bypasses. I think the judicial bypass is in the Senate. And as I understand, the substitute version going to the House floor today is a, is, is a version I am comfortable with. Governor George W. Bush has not been comfortable with taking a stand on bills that are still moving targets in the legislature. But the parental notification bill brought out his firmest stance on a controversial issue. Here's what I'm for in parental notification. I'm for a bill that will substantially reduce the number of abortions in the state of Texas. Another sticking point that was worked out was a penalty for doctors who perform teenage abortions without notifying parents. That would come with a $10,000 fine. However, there is an exception for emergency abortions where there's no time to notify parents. In Austin, Danny Edmosil, The News of Texas. The abortion parental notification bill is also in danger in the Texas Senate. There are rumblings of a possible filibuster. As Governor Bush was announcing a Texas program to deal with school violence over in Georgia, it was happening again. Six students hurt when another student opened fire, opened fire that is in Conyers, Georgia, this morning. All the students are expected to survive, and the suspected shooter has been captured. Here in Texas, meanwhile, the state today issued a $420,000 grant to try to deal with the rise in school shootings. The money will be used to set up a center at Southwest Texas State University in San Marcos. The center will train teams of law enforcement officers, parents, and educators to develop school safety plans. Meanwhile, if the Y2K bug bites your computer, don't call your lawyer. Yesterday, Governor Bush signed a new bill that will limit liability for businesses trying to fix the Y2K bug. Bush calls it a critical move that would help minimize problems and disruptions in the new millennium while heading off lawsuits. Investigators in the case of a missing Saginaw girl have released a psychological profile of the person who may have snatched her. So far, there are no arrests in the March 26th disappearance of Opal Joe Jennings. She was last seen playing outside her grandmother's home. Witnesses told Saginaw police a middle-aged man got out of his car, grabbed the girl, punched her in the chest, and threw her into his vehicle. The FBI says the abductor likely lives alone, does drugs, and may have had something an event that pushed him over the edge, such as losing his job. A Texas police officer is dead, killed in a gunfight with a suspected car thief. It happened yesterday morning in Houston during an undercover auto theft operation on State Highway 59. Here's Gina Parsons with the story. Officer Troy Blando was in plain clothes and an unmarked car cruising the Southwest Freeway for stolen automobiles. It would be the last time he would stop an auto theft suspect. The suspect, from what an eyewitness is telling us, opened fire on Officer Blando. Officer Blando was able to return fire but did not hit the suspect. Police say the young man then made a run for it. Nearby bicycle cops caught him. He's charged with capital murder. The suspect is not being cooperative with our homicide investigators as far as the details of what happened. We do know that Officer Blando was hit on the left side of his chest with a bullet from a Glock handgun. Police cars led the way for his ambulance, but by the time he reached Ben Taub Hospital, he was unconscious. He was immediately brought from the ambulance to the operating room where he underwent about a one hour long operation, despite 
everything that was tried, we never could get his uh, heart uh, to beat again. Troy Blando was 39 years old. He'd been a Houston policeman for 19 years. He leaves behind a wheelchair-bound wife and a 13-year-old son named Daniel. Pray for Officer Troy Blando's family, his wife, his little boy, and all the officers and employees of the Houston Police Department. It was a very sad time for me as Chief of Police. The last time a Houston police officer was killed in the line of duty was almost exactly a year ago today. That officer was gunned down by teenage vandals as he tried to stop them from breaking into automobiles in his own neighborhood. In Houston, Gina Parsons, the News of Texas. Some new information on this story. The suspect in the shooting, 23-year-old Jeffrey DeMond Williams, has now confessed to police, and the Houston Fire Department has launched an investigation into how long it took the ambulance to reach the scene. However, doctors say the wound was so severe, a few extra minutes may not have made a difference. Preparations are underway for the second dragging death trial, and yesterday the judge who will be presiding over the trial visited Brian. Judge Monty Lawless walked through the Brazos County Courthouse and met with the sheriff and other county officials to discuss security matters. Since the courtroom will not be available until August 30th, the judge will begin the jury selection about three weeks earlier at the Bryan Civic Center. The new Veterans International Bridge at Brownsville was meant to divert traffic, truck traffic that is, from two other international bridges. But Mexican truckers say the new bridge is making their wait to cross the border even longer. The Veterans International Bridge connecting Brownsville and Matamoros, Mexico, opened about two weeks ago. But Mexican officials say they weren't prepared to handle so much truck traffic. Truckers are complaining that they can make three runs across the border on the old bridges, but the new bridge is so inefficient they can only manage one trip a day. The state is trying to secure $25 million to connect thousands of colonias or border households to water and sewer lines. If the plan comes together, about 100,000 households would get modern sanitation. Dan Molina has the story from Hidalgo County. Adan Garza is a man making the best of a raw deal. He's going to finish what he's done here so that he can move from that to this. Adan bought this little corner of a colonia one of those unregulated housing developments outside cities about seven years ago. In the first little house he built here, there's just a trickle of running water, the same for all the basic services. That's the way it is for hundreds of thousands of people in the colonias of the borderlands, and that's one thing powerful voices in the Texas legislature want to change. But if we don't do something about housing, for example, that's a major issue, then by the year 2010, we're going to see ourselves with over 700,000 people along the border in need of affordable housing. So the time is now, the time is ripe, and the time is now to do things. Modi Guzman of the Valley Interfaith Council is one of the driving forces behind Senate Bill 1421. The bill has a lot of goals, most of them simple. Then everybody would have an individual water meter. There would be a bigger pipe flowing the water to this, to this area and then everybody would be satisfied. What's emerged in the legislature, slowly, sometimes painfully, is an awareness that colonias are not just places that are going to blow away with the next big hurricane. Colonias are the first step into productive life for a large and growing segment of the Texas population. Within that population today, there are a lot more people willing to be organized and say, we demand certain basic standards of decency. Some new colonias already have paved streets, nice rows of mailboxes, trash pickup, and street signs. Making such things required under state law will involve spending some public money, and a dilemma for politicians is how that's justified. There are health care issues, uh, there are human issues, more important. As for Modi Guzman, there's more organizing to do. In the borderlands, Dan Molina, The News of Texas. There's still more ahead on the News of Texas at Midday. Some Texas schools had computers, some didn't. Some had new textbooks, some didn't. So something had to be done. A controversial plan was adopted to help level the educational playing field. We'll take a look at how Robin Hood is doing. It's been a rocky road to success for a Texas ice cream company, but now everything is tutti frutti all rudy. Stay tuned. The TOS test gap is shrinking due in large part to a shift in school funding. That's according to a new study by Texas A&M. The study shows that the so-called Robin Hood school funding plan is not only moving money from richer to poorer districts, it's also improving scores. Here's TXN's Robbie Owens. This is day one. This is day one. 
and how much money have you spent? Jenny Peepenbrink's fourth grade class plans a Texas vacation, complete with itinerary and budget. A property poor district Mesquite school budget this year received a $23 million boost in an effort to equalize per pupil spending between wealthy and not so wealthy districts. And teachers say the money matters. In the past, if I wanted something extra, I had to purchase it myself, which on a teacher's salary is kind of hard. They're able to work in small groups, pull out the, the large desk maps and the calculators and the, um, use the computers to write to their pen pals and, and be able to really um, make learning come more alive for them. But the cost of that learning is being subsidized by property-rich districts. The Robin Hood plan, as it's called, has been and remains controversial. I don't think uh, we're pleased with Robin Hood at all. And we're not pleased for our children in our school district that we could be doing more for. We're not pleased uh, for our taxpayers in our district who are having to uh, pay more for their child's education. But taxpayers in property-rich districts are not always paying higher taxes. For example, the tax rate in Mesquite is actually higher than the tax rate in Carrollton Farmers Branch, a property-rich district. The difference that led to the Robin Hood plan is that property-rich districts have a lot more property to tax. And so if they have an ability to raise $80 per student per penny of tax effort, and we can only raise 12 or 15, the state has made an unequal situation. And so the way to correct that is to reduce the amount of revenue that a rich district can raise compared to what a property poor district can raise. In Mesquite, money from the so-called Robin Hood plan has rewarded schools with more technology, more teachers, teachers' aides, and supplies. And in return, school officials say the students have rewarded taxpayers with better performance. Our TOS scores are on a very good incline. And not only that, but our subpopulations, meaning uh, those in low socioeconomic status or some of the minority populations, they're actually making faster gains than the Anglo population. Better student performance is what educators, lawmakers, and taxpayers say they want. But the question of who pays for that performance is where the agreement ends. In Mesquite, Robbie Owens, The News of Texas. Straight ahead on The News of Texas, some clouds around the state, but generally sunny today. So what does the weekend have in store for you? Find out next in weather. And boy, ain't this the weather to be slurping down some ice cream. Peaches and cream, double fudge chocolate nut, or good old strawberry. Coming up, we'll have the scoop on why the world's best ice cream is made right here in Texas. 